Good afternoon, everyone. Samali Hogan here with the Small Business Development Center Network. My office is located in Springfield, Massachusetts. Today, we're doing a webinar on financial assistance for small businesses impacted by COVID-19. Our main presenter speaker is Oresta Varela uh, from the SBA. He's the branch manager here at the Springfield office. We're also joined by Robert Nelson, who's the director here in, in Massachusetts for the SBA. And he'll be speaking with you in just a second. And I want to let you all know that this webinar and many of our other webinars have been brought to you by collaboration of technical assistance providers here in the Western Mass. Those include SCORE, the Center for Women Enterprise, Common Capital, Franklin County CDC, Valley Community Development, and uh, Mass Growth Capital Corporation is the founder of many, several of those programs. The Small Business Development Center is also a, um, a one of the co-host of this uh, webinar today and we have offices in part we're part of the UMass as well as Clark University on Salem State and we couldn't do this program without our funders which is the SBA primarily also this the state of Massachusetts executive office of housing and economic development provides funding for our program and we're part of America's SBDC on the screen, you can see the names and uh, the logos and contact information for the various uh, technical assistance providers in our area who are available to ask, answer your questions about uh, any of the SBA programs and other grants available to small businesses. Here's a listing of all of the offices throughout the state for uh, the Massachusetts Small Business De Development Network. Um, you also know on the screen that we have a mass export center that's for businesses who are looking to do exporting, as well as a procurement technical assistance center that's available to help those businesses who are do looking to do government contracting. The best way to get all this information is on our website, which is at the top of the slide. If you're looking for assistance, one-on-one -on -one assistance, the best way to do that with this small business development center is by going to our website and filling out a request for counseling form. The link is on the screen. And again, I know I'm going through this pretty quickly. I will make sure I'll get you a link to the, today's recording so you can review this in the future. It'll probably come out sometime next week. All right, so now that's not part of the presentation. That's, that's another slide. Anyway, without further ado, uh, Bob, if you wouldn't mind um, getting us started here with today's uh, presentation. Sure. Well, uh, thank you, Samala. Uh, and I'm going to be real brief because uh, for the folks who are joining today, you are in really good hands with Samala and Areste uh, in order to explain the SBA's programs and services, but also th the resources available to help small businesses to continue on with their path uh, for recovery. But hey, I just wanted to let people know. So with this round of PPP funding, it's it's different than the previous rounds of PPP that we did prior to August 8th. And it's much more controlled. It seems much smoother. Uh, we're actually seeing real strong activity when we look at the uh, number of approvals so far, um, you know, with this most recent funding. In, in Massachusetts, we're at uh, roughly about 30,000 approvals for about $3 billion, which is really fantastic. And, and you know, so what folks should know is that uh, there's still a lot of money available. So there's certainly a lot of time uh, remaining for folks to apply uh, for PPP, whether it's a first draw or a second draw. The, the deadline is March 31st. So uh, if, you, if you need assistance with how to calculate maximum loan amounts and uh, technical assistance with the applications, if you're having problems uh, with anything, certainly, you know, you have the SBA resources, but our resource partners partners who are here and willing, passionate, and, and it's all about trying to help rebuild the economy and to help our businesses uh, to get on with their recovery. But but uh, I, I know Arreste is going to go through all the different uh, tools and the toolbox that we have to, uh, to help the small businesses here in the Commonwealth. But I just wanted to jump on quickly just to, to, just to say 
high to uh, thank uh, Samalad and her team from the SBDC, but the uh, the Western Mass uh, Alliance that you've um, developed and, and all the resources that you have working with small businesses. So kudos to you and what you're doing out there in Western Mass. And all right. So good afternoon, everyone. Thanks uh, to Bob, our district director, to, to Samalad, the director of uh, Western Mass Small Business Development Center, uh, everyone here today. My name is Oresti Varela. I work for the Small Business Administration. If you didn't know, we're a federal agency. Uh, we're one of the smallest agencies. There's only about 3,000 of us or so in the field. Uh, uh, in Massachusetts, there's only about 14 of us, and uh, uh, 13 of which are out of the Boston office, and then one of which is in the Springfield office, and you're looking at them. So uh, traditionally, I cover the four counties of Western Massachusetts, but during uh, uh, these times, uh, during the pandemic, whatever, we're all uh, physically working remotely from home and uh, we're covering you know, larger areas or having other uh, people join in. So, and I even see today on the, uh, there's people from far and wide from a uh, uh, large area of the Western Mass, but everyone is, everyone is welcome. So that's me, that's me pre-COVID uh, yeah. <laughs> being stuck at home, I'm stuck with potato chips and whatever. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, being home is, has some advantages, but not for weight loss, at least not for me. Anyway, so uh, what we're going to go through today, we're going to talk about uh, the economic aid uh, overview. And this is pretty current as of the 5th of February. Uh, and basically, uh, I'm not going to read every word on every slide, but we're going to uh, uh, the next slide actually has a little bit more. So here's the uh, agenda, kind of where we are in terms of economic aid, uh, the different funding options, some details about PPP and the economic injury disaster loan, uh, the grant programs, which is the targeted at idle advance and the, and the shuttered venue. Uh, and then the, even though uh, Small had already talked about additional assistance and resources, uh, have that in there too. So anyway, uh, Congress intended this round of economic aid to support hardest hit small businesses and those, uh, you know, oh, I have to move this out of the way so I can see what this is. <laughs> oh, and uh, those in the underserved segments, uh, women owned, minorities, veterans. So, and we as an agency, we're always, uh, actually focused on those areas, serving the underserved, as it were, uh, but uh, especially during these times. One of the things uh, I don't think Bob mentioned, but uh, with especially with this second round of PPP, I believe 88% of uh, the funding is $150,000 or less. The loan, you know, the PPP loan, $150,000 or less. Those are, that's 88% of the funding is going to really small companies. And I think it's like 60% are, uh, um, is going or so to uh, $50,000 or less. So these are really small companies. So we, you know, it, uh, even though you watch the news and you say, oh, this company got X number of dollars. Oh, well, only, and even I've, every other day, someone calls me up and tells me so they say, Oh, well, only the big companies get that. No, well, that's not true. We're, we're, we're reaching out to all these different communities. And anyway, so this is kind of a little outline of what we're going to cover. Uh, so you see loan programs, and there's really three you can see there. So the PPP, and then the debt relief. And we'll talk a little bit about debt relief and what that is on our, you know, our, our basically our primary loans prior to COVID, which are the 7A504 microloans. Uh, and then the economic injury disaster loan, which is a loan. And then there, uh, there was up until July or so, the advance slash grant. And now we have a new program targeted idle advance. We'll talk about that. And then shuttered venue operator grant, which uh, is not in effect just yet, we have some information, we have some, and, and, and I tried on almost every slide to have websites so you can, you can go and uh, take a look at yourself to find out more information 
our detailed information. Today's an overview. That's uh, kind of what uh, was intended to be. But, uh, and so we'll get right into it here. So the PPP top takeaways, what are the top takeaways? Uh, uh, the the uh, eligibility for PPP is, is expanded uh, to some degree and how funds can be used. Uh, what hasn't really changed is the borrower can select covered period between eight and 24 weeks. Initially, it was just eight weeks and then it, the other option uh, came in. But anyway, with this, with this round, it's eight and 24 weeks. Uh, the second draw a PPP loan option is for hardest hit small businesses. Uh, and then there's uh, an allowance. There's allowance for different deductions of expenses, uh, uh, cover within uh, forgiven PPP loan debt on federal taxes. Uh, oh, actually, there's that data right there. Uh, you can see loans of, uh, I'm sorry, that's still trying to move this little bar out of my way here so I can <laughs> read the slides. Uh, right, simplified forgiveness on loans of 150000 uh, or less, and then uh, and then the, you know prior to this uh, legislation, uh, the idle advance was being deducted from forgiveness, and that is no longer the case. And again, we're going to talk a little more detail uh, about these. So, what is the first draw uh, PPP? And so. This is for applicants that did not receive a PP loan prior to August 9th, 2020. So it means you didn't receive, you've never received the PP loan. That's what this first draw is. It gets a little confusing when we talk about, well, what's the first draw? And this is the second draw. No, I, we mean the, the first time PPP was, <laughs> and then the second time. But anyway, so, so what we're saying, uh, you know, with this, this, legislation that was passed in late December was that uh, uh, a business can receive a first draw PPP, all right? Uh, and and uh, the eligibility includes different types of entities. I think I have a uh, slide on that. Uh, and the covered expenses are expanded and borrowers can set the, the covered period you already kind of, that was in the, slide before this. Uh, this is a, a big thing to keep in mind. What hasn't changed is that the, the, the business must have been in business 15 February 2020. That has not changed. We get a lot of questions about, well, I started, I started my business right during the pandemic. I'm sorry, but you're not eligible unless you were in business 15 February 2020. Uh, and, and keep in mind, one thing I, I wanted to mention is that Congress makes the legislation and the administration approves or, or, or not, whatever, but in this case, approved it. They make the rules. What SBA does, we don't, SBA doesn't change the rules. We execute them. So we say, he, the Congress says, these are the rules. And then our folks at headquarters write policy according to those rules. So we have no flexibility. We, uh, our systems are designed according to what the legislation was passed. So just uh, keep that in mind. We don't have flexibility uh, only to the degree that Congress has given it to us. Uh, the other big thing is for PPP, uh, this uh, round of PPP is that applications, you must apply on or before the 31st of March or until appropriations are exhausted. So let's keep those things in mind. Uh, first draw loan eligibility. You can see that, you know, in terms of this expansion, most businesses are eligible, most, uh, just in terms of the type of businesses. They, they've added in housing cooperatives, uh, uh, destination marketing organizations, 501c6s, which are chambers of commerce, uh, certain news organizations. And then you can see the list there that is still eligible, which 
is most small businesses, sole proprietors, independent contractor, self-employed, business entities, so on and so forth. Uh, uh, so, so that's who is eligible. Second draw. So what is the second draw? The second draw is for bar borrowers that previously received the PPP loan. Um, meaning that they received it prior to August of 2020, all right? And there, there are other, um, uh, the other eligibility criteria is uh, the maximum loan amount for the second draw is two and a half times the monthly um, payroll, 2019 or 2020, uh, up to $2 million. That's the maximum loan amount. Uh, for borrowers in the accommodation and food service sector, which is the NAICS code, which is uh, 72, the NAICS code. And I always forget what the NAICS code <laughs> stands for. It's, that's a really long, but uh, if you aren't sure what your NAICS code is, you could actually just Google, just Google NAICS uh, code 72, that'll tell you what it is or, but basically it's uh, accommodation and food service sector. And so what's changed, uh, knowing that uh, this is kind of more targeted uh, to uh, help restaurants and other type of uh, other in industries in the food service accommodation, uh, the calculation is three and a half times the average monthly salary, uh, 2019 to 2020 payroll costs, again, up to 2 million. So, so let's say uh, a restaurant got a PPP uh, last year, uh, they could actually get a larger PPP this time around. All right. So, and then the, you can see the second draw applicants uh, must submit this form. Now we say that, and we say that you must submit this form, but the reality is that uh, just as with the first round uh, last year, the, the application process is with an SBA lender. And to my knowledge, every <laughs> lender has it automated, meaning that you go to their website and you are going to fill out that form online. Uh, not that you're going to be downloading this form and then filling it out and sending it. I guess that's possible, but I haven't heard. Uh, you certainly download the form and look at it, but uh, again, uh, you'll be applying through the lender. And I talk about that a little later in a little more uh, detail. So again, the loan eligibility must have previously received the first draw of the BP loan uh, uh, and covered periods cannot overlap. So meaning that if you received it, let's say in, in uh, August and you're doing 24 weeks and whatever 20, when, well, I don't know what's the, you know, I'm terrible at math, uh, Samala, help me out. <laughs> so what's 24, <laughs> weeks, what's 24 weeks from August? I don't know. But anyway, the point would be that you would, would have, have to Google have, that. Yeah, you would have to have exhausted the funds before you, you uh, apply for the new PPP, the second round, if that makes sense. So you can't have covered periods. That's kind of what they mean there. You can't have the covered periods <laughs> overlapping. But... Uh, Arista, quick yes. question, because you were in the previous slide, you were talking about the times uh, for the calculation of the first draw PPP funds. Uh, one of the questions is, is there a three and a half times payroll calculation for the NAICS code starting in 72? So for those businesses who have an industry classification for the North American industry classification system that starts their number with 72, um, is there a such thing for three, three and a half times payroll? That's exactly what that slide, yes, that's exactly. So, so if you uh, could go back what, to that one. Yeah, let me see here. Yeah, that's exactly what it says. So mm -hmm. so if you have an X code of 72, the mm -hmm. calculation's gonna be three and a half times the average monthly payroll. Yeah, for everybody else it's two and a half. 
Everyone else is two and a half, correct. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Welcome. Uh, anyway, additional criteria for second draw, PPP, uh, no more than 300 employees. And this is the big one, the big one that, um, uh, that you have to meet. You have to demonstrate at least 25% reduction in gross receipts between comparable quarters in 2019 and 20 or year over year. So, um, and what I'll be doing is, um, we're not gonna be doing any, count, any public math today, but I'll be providing you the links so that you can uh, look for yourself. There's scenarios in, in the documents that we have that say, if you are this, this is how you calculate it. So I'll be providing those links to you. Uh, Smiley will get this uh, presentation to you so that you can uh, then have those links. Uh, but I'll give you other, and, and I, this, this is the kind of the slide I'm talking about. And it gets a little crowded down here when we're looking at those links, uh, but I'll tell you another way that's simpler to access this. So what is the, the hey. loan? Yes. Or is the yeah, the um, does that three and a half times for the business is starting with the next code seventy two? Does that apply for the second draw as well, or just the first draw? Uh, it's both. I believe. I believe hey, that it's both. Hey, hey, Oreste, it's it's Carlos. I don't know if I you can hear me. I, yeah. I hey. Hi, Carlos. Hey, hi, Samalit. I couldn't get in with the Zoom link. It wasn't allowing me, so I'm, I'm here incognito here. I don't even know how my name showed up on the as the screen. But this is a, an important question because we received this uh, a lot of times. So as Arreste mentioned earlier, you had your first time draw loans, and then you had your second draw loans. So for second draw loans only, so this is for any applicant who's going now for their second loan. Right, so this not not no one who's coming for the first time. This, so that anyone who's coming for their second time, going back to the bank for a second PPP loan, at that time the three and a half times um, payroll amount comes into play. Only only on second draw loans. So I, it's a it's an important question, and it's it's one that we received a few times. So hopefully that answers Thanks. that bar. So not, not, on first draw, not on first draw, not on first draw loan. Not on first. So that's good. First Thanks, okay. Carlos. All right. And for, for those of you who don't know, so the way our office is kind of uh, uh, the way we're structured is we have different people are experts in different things. Uh, like uh, Nadine Boone, she's on, but she's listening today. She's not participating. And she's an expert in, in contracting. Carlos is an expert in, uh, actually his, his title is a, a lender relations specialist. So he works with lenders all day, every day. So he's the expert. And I'm an expert in nothing. <laughs> I am a generalist, really. So I know a little bit about everything, but we got each other's backs and that's what's important. So I appreciate Carlos jumping in there. Uh, help me out. So thank you again. Uh, anyway, so the loan application process, how do you find a PPP lender? So when you look around or drive around Massachusetts and you see this bank and that bank and the other bank, most banks, most banks are SBA lenders are actually, uh, I don't know what the percentage is, but there's a couple of things to keep in mind. It's a voluntary program. Uh, banks choose to participate to be SBA lenders. Uh, uh, there's actually online uh, banks like, uh, well, not I guess not banks, but I guess they're lenders like PayPal and other things like of, of that nature uh, that are, are uh, at least partic at minimum, they're participating in PPP. So there's different avenues and there's different ways to find them. A uh, way to find them is through our, our lender match, sba.gov slash lender match. That's one mechanism. That's a, a lender referral portal. Uh, the other is if you go to sba.gov paycheck protection slash find. That's another way to find a lender. Uh, and then the other one is through our resource partner network. So, and then uh, actually, uh, Samala had a slide and, but again, uh, that's what Samalit and her team could do. They can say, hey, here's lenders that we know in this particular area. Uh, and, and let's say, so Samalit and her team are here in Western Mass, but there are folks that are out up in uh, Salem State, 
university, right, up in the Northeast. Oh, well, uh, talk to them and they can provide you with lenders. So there's lots of different ways to find participating uh, PPP lenders. And then, uh, then, you know, once you find a lender, like I'd mentioned earlier, in almost every case, everything's going to be online. Uh, the lenders have, have each stood up. And, and that's another point is that uh, we don't control the lenders, at least what is on the portal. We provide them information and whatever mechanism they have chosen is kind of their, uh, that, that, that's on them. We provide guidance. We provide assistance. Uh, so I was talking to someone earlier today and they said, I'm on this lender's, uh, portal trying to apply and it won't let me do this. And I said, well, I, you're going to have to work it out with them because there's nothing we, I, I can't change what they've done. So they're like, oh, okay. Okay. So, but in all cases, in most cases, you're going to go online, fill out the application, and then usually upload any supporting documentation. Uh, that is uh, required, and then, uh, and then you know, once that's all done, and then the lender enters that into the system, then SBA issues uh, the the loan. So you can see there, and then there's a you know a compliance check, and then a loan number is issued to the lender. But uh, if you have any questions uh, uh, throughout that process, the primary contact would be the lender. They're the ones we do not have access to the lending portal. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, which is curious, but <laughs> we do not. But uh, anyway, uh, and then there's a bunch of stuff there uh, on the bottom of this slide. I, I couldn't uh, eliminate the thing that gives you this website or uh, coronavirus relief anyway. So it got a little, uh, crowded down there. But if you go to sba.gov slash PPP, okay, that's the simple one. Easy to remember, easy to write down, sba.gov PPP. On the left-hand side, you will see, it'll say first draw, second draw. And then if you're first draw, you click on that. And then within that website, it'll say how to calculate first draw loan amounts. Okay, so, and then you'll go up there and it'll give you these different scenarios. If you are a sole proprietor with no employees, do the following. Okay, so that's, uh, and then similarly, sba.gov, PPP, second draw, then you will go down uh, the web page and you will see this really long website, uh, second draw, PPP, how to calculate second draw revenue reduction, maximum loan amount. So all the information is there uh, on our website. They've made it relatively simple. Okay, so, <clears throat> uh, Samalu, are we gonna wait to answer questions till later or how did you wanna? It's up to you. I'm kind of just... seeing them as they go so that um, when you're in a particular okay. slide, I'm not letting it go too far. There is one question, though, okay. that may be applicable at this point in time, which is one of the people, folks here, and I know other folks as well, have had, um, you know, if, if, if they're a small S Corp and in 2019 they only took a draw, so they didn't have payroll, how would they determine their eligibility? And I think that's where you're getting at in terms of those calculators. Does those calculators um, help with that? I, uh, yes. I mean, I know I, I, when I read those documents, it'll say if you're in, I know I, you know, I, 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 I don't have a photographic memory, but I know it says if you are an S corp slash C or C corp, do these things. But, uh, some some of the scenarios will not be there. Like it, it, you can't cover every scenario to every uh, degree, and that's where you know some discussion would have to uh, ensue. Now, what was the, so? What was that particular scenario again? There is small S corp. S -corp. Yeah, there is small S corp, and they did in 2019. They didn't have payroll, but they took a draw, owner's draw. So the owners of the company and is the, is the is the owner's draw documented? 
Was that so documented? Question. I would have. Question. I would assume so. The, the accounting, yes. So if if it's if it's documented, then unless Carlos <laughs> tells me I'm wrong, then is, if the owner's draw is documented, then it's possible to um, it's possible to submit for a PPP. Right. But uh, like I've talked to a lot of different companies where they say, yeah, I took a draw, but it's not documented that I took a draw. Or I was like, well, well okay, do you have a bank statement? Do you have a transfer? Do you have something, <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, but uh, anyway, you have to, you know, in, in all cases, you have to be able to prove that uh, what, you've, what you've done in the previous, uh, uh, you know, right. during 2019, so. And we do have a question here. Um, so I believe she wants to speak up. Melody, do you wanna ask your question? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Uh, my question was, I'm Melody Weldon and I own Melody's Place Lodging in Chalamont, Mass. And I... Um... Remember, this has been recorded, so nothing too private or oh, well, <laughs> you know, sensitive. I, well, you can find me everywhere, so I'm not too <laughs> okay, sensitive. Good. <laughs> I, okay, good. I, I try to make sure that it's always out there. Um, mm -hmm. So with the coronavirus, it's, you know, of course, renting on the platforms, uh, Airbnb and, and Verbo, and uh, I have uh, another one. Um, it's been difficult with two of my rooms that share a hall bath. So my question is, you know, is it possible to uh, have them help you with a loan to uh, make your business more work in this time that we're in? That we may be in forever. I don't know if anybody will want to share a bath again. I it's been you know. So what it does is I can rent one of the rooms, but I can't rent the other one, at the same time. So, so what is the question? I'm basically asking: Can I apply for this lo for a loan to help me with adding another bathroom? Is that something that they help you with with you know improving your business as it is? Well, for the PPP, so I believe Orestes just got frozen up and Carlos is on the line. Um, so for the PPP, it's primarily for payroll, right? Okay. There is, um, there is a, some flexibility in terms of like 60, you know, that you can use up to, okay. In terms of forgiveness, there is a flexibility where you, if you use up to 60% for payroll and the rest 40% for other eligible expenses, you um, you can still you know use the funding. It's not really intended for um, you know expansion or um, improvements to uh, a business. It's really intended to help keep people employed um, oh, okay. in the business. Yeah. So okay. there are other small um, other uh, grants available out there um, that um, I I can think of one that uh, the state grant. It was also not for major improvements or expansion, but they have a little bit more flexibility. So this would not necessarily be that for that. Um, what was uh, the name of that one you said? Oh, uh, that was to, to the Massachusetts Growth Capital Corporation, but that one closed recently. Oh. And that was really specifically also for, for businesses who were in really dire need for um, yeah. financing because they were about to close, so to speak. And they were yeah. behind in bills or, yeah. or rent. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I totally went through that earlier in the year. The summer was a little better, but, um, and winter's pretty good because I'm across the street from Berkshire East, the mountains, so we got some skiing. So it's a whole different thing than yeah. this is just We should talk offline. Run. We should talk offline about other options for you. I'll put my, sure, my, sure. I'll put my, I'll put my email in the chat. All right, sounds great. Thank you. Okay, thank you, no problem. <laughs> All right, Arisa, I, are you back? I just wanted to add too, she brings up a good point though. That's that's a really good point um, because one of the changes with that economic bill this time around is it allowed some additional eligible expenses. I'm sure Arrested covered it earlier. So like some examples would be, you know, you can put like some type of sneeze guard, some type of um, air pressure ventilation, filtration system. Um, you know, some restaurants have put up dividers now to help, you know, for the restrictions and capacity limits. So some of those are now eligible to be, you know, forgiven under the PPP, whereas the prior version did not allow for those um, expenses to be included. So just, you know, something to think about as you, you know, get approved and, you know, begin your covered period. But the, as Samuelie, like you, you, you stated earlier, the primary purpose still remains, you know, is the Paycheck Protection Program. And in order for the full loan to be forgiven, there's still that 60 
um, percent requirement for for payroll. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll put I'll put it back to Oreste. All right, yeah, and Oreste rejoining us. Uh, he had a little bit of a technical yeah. difficulty, but he's back with us, and uh, he'll be sharing his screen momentarily. So we took every care of the questions, Oreste. <clears throat> great, great, yeah. And you're every, all set to I haven't <laughs> I haven't been through a Zoom yet that uh, where I haven't been bounced out for some for some reason. But anyway, it's. it's well, but okay. I'm back. <laughs> so I think this was the last slide uh, that we uh, covered, that I covered. And again, it emphasizes also on the slide about March 31st uh, being the final day. Okay, so, uh, so the PPP, again, is a loan, is a loan that can be 100% forgiven. Uh, uh, but the loans, okay, have... Uh, fixed interest rate of 1%, non-compounding, non-adjustable, no requirement for collateral or personal guarantees, no fees or prepayment penalties. It's a five-year maturity. This is, uh, uh, you can see there before June 5th, it was two years, uh, but anyway, it, it's now this, uh, it's five years. Uh, the payments uh, start once the borrower knows how much the PPP loan will be forgiven a lender will notify the borrower. If the borrower does not apply for forgiveness, payments start 10 months after the last day of the covered period. So what that means is that uh, you don't have to, you do have to apply for forgiveness, that's the first thing. And then the second thing is you have 10 months till the end of the covered period. So let's say it's February, let's say you got money February 1st, and your covered period is eight weeks. So for every March, April, then you have 10 months uh, uh, to apply for forgiveness, right? And forgiveness, forgiveness isn't going away. Uh, so there's no rush to apply for forgiveness, all right? And then uh, here's some more information about the forgiveness. Uh, it's kind of what I just said. <laughs> you must apply for forgiveness. The the updates with the Economic Aid Act passed in uh, in December is that the EIDL, that's the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance, which is everyone calls that the EIDL grant, right, are no longer deducted from PP loan forgiveness. Uh, expenses paid with PPP loan funds are federally tax deductible. Okay, consult the IRS on that. We have nothing to do. SBA doesn't to get involved in IRS. They got their whole other agency. All right. So, uh, but you can see there is that. Uh, and there's an expansion of forgivable expenses uh, that are permissible for many uh, unforgiven PPP loan. Uh, and there are there is a new simplified forgiveness application for PPP loans, 150000 or less. Uh, uh, and then you can see their forgiven PPP loans are not federally taxable income, all right? So they're not income. And then again, you, know, you can go to the link there. Uh, when you go to sba.gov PPP, you'll see there's a page there just on loan forgiveness. So you can you know, get all the details on forgiveness. Now we're moving from uh, the PPP to the economic injury, the disaster loan. Uh, you can see provides, yes. Quick quick question, uh, Nick, it's on the line and he has a quick question and I believe it's about the PPP. Nick, sure. uh, is your question about the PPP? Can you go ahead and ask it? Oh, we can't hear you. He's on mute, but we can't hear him. All right, we'll have him type the, we'll have him type the question in the Q&A or in the chat. You may continue. And uh, anyway, Nick is famous, if you know, so you don't know. Yes. <laughs> Nick told me, yes, uh, yes. He's, I talked to him a couple of different times uh, a few months ago and uh, actually saw him at, a, at an event with the Small Business Development Center, but uh, he's a uh, famous guy. He used to be on the Deadliest Catch, uh, in those you know, crab boats. Uh, anyway, so, uh, uh, yeah, so the economic injury disaster loan. So this was really the first 
thing that we that SBA rolled out when when COVID hit. It was really the first uh, thing it rolled out. But but things have uh, uh, what uh, and and uh, originally the deadline was 31 December 2020. So that's been extended throughout. 2021. So December 31st, 2021. So this is still available. This is a loan. All right. Let's make this clear. This is, we're just talking about the economic injury disaster loan. All right. When you apply for this, you are applying for a loan. I got a call today, like I do almost every day. And they said, oh, I applied for this grant for $25,000. It was a grant, $25,000 economic. I said, that's not a grant. That's that's a loan. They're like, what? <laughs> I was like, uh, anyway. So, and the terms of the loan for for uh, most businesses, it's three point seven five percent interest rate fixed, or if you're a nonprofit, two point seven five percent fixed. Thirty years, no prepayment penalty. Uh, loans over twenty five thousand are secured by this UCC filing. There's actually a hundred hundred dollar fee for for that, and it's uh, anyway. So those are the terms. The uh, almost you can see they're qualified small businesses, cooperatives, agricultural enterprises with few five hundred or fewer employees. So most businesses are eligible for this uh, for this particular loan. Uh, and before I uh, actually um, talk about the targeted advance, if you go to sba.gov slash disaster, okay, and then it'll say apply for assistance, click on that. That's how you apply for the economic injury disaster loan, all right? Uh, sba.gov slash disaster. So a new program, Targeted Idle Advance. What is this about? <laughs> what is this? So, uh, so what happened was there was a period of time, I think it ended the uh, first week of July, where the Idle Advance slash grant was being offered to people who applied for the loan, economic injury disaster loan. And there was a little checkbox. I want to be considered for the grant. And it was, the grant was $1,000 per employee, up to $10,000. Well, we ran out of money in July or so. So this is addressing that to some degree, meaning it's addressing businesses uh, in, in its terms of being targeted, right, in these hardest hit areas. So you can see here, what will it do? It will balance out a previous advance to the full 10,000 if the business, one, is in a low-income community, two, suffered greater than 30% economic loss, and three, has 300 or fewer employees, all right? So those are the requirements. The next thing here, those who applied for the advance but didn't receive the funds because there were no funds were available, they'll receive $10,000. Again, this is a grant. If they meet the same requirements as above. So what, do you, what, what am I gonna do? I want this, <laughs> I want this. What do I do? Nothing, you don't have to do anything. You're gonna get an email. Uh, you will get an email, the, the email you use to apply for the loan initially. We have all that information. Carlos isn't going to do anything. Bob's not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. It comes from headquarters, come from, from actually from the disaster team. So they will contact you. They will say, uh, you know, greetings, so-and-so. Uh, here's some information. Follow this link and apply, and I think I have a slide, yes. So these are the requirements. When you apply, I'll tell you, do not rush. Do not rush to get it done because you have one chance. 
If you make a mistake, we're sorry, but you have one chance. There's no reconsideration for this. So take your time and uh, provide the following, you know, follow the, the, the email that you're given and follow the instructions that you're given, but this is what will be required. 2019 tax return, EIN, SSN, as specified on the original application, gross receipts for 2019, 2020, and completed months in 2021, uh, confirm information on the original idle application, if it's still accurate. I know there are some changes. I talked to someone yesterday uh, where their address had, uh, you know, their mailing address had changed. Uh, and then uh, uh, if applicants pass this eligibility requirement, they're re re required to sign a 4506T, which allows SBA to obtain tax transcripts from the IRS, all right? So all those things happen before the advance would be approved. And again, you do nothing. The SBA will contact you. Uh, and then here is kind of like I is re-emphasizing what I mentioned, only one submission for an advance can be made. You know, review your bank account information. A lot of people initially would call us and they say, Oh, I just applied for the loan, and but my banking information is all messed up. I'm like, oh, okay, well, take your time because it just creates uh, issues later. So, again, ensure 100% uh, the information you submitted is correct. Uh, SBA will not make considerations. The goal is to complete applications within 21 days. That's what the goal is. Uh, and if you have, once you receive the email, don't send emails to these folks yet, but if you receive this email for the targeted advance and you had questions, you would send questions to targeted advance at sba.gov. And then if you, uh, again, if and when you receive that email, the, uh, a direct deposit would be made to your bank. That's, there's that. Now, the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. Uh, the first line there, application is not open yet. Number one, application is not open. Number two, you will need to register on sam.gov to apply for this. So that's something that you can start. You can go to each business and actually each lender, my understanding is, have to register in SAM.gov. Okay. Uh, but anyway, the eligible entities, live venue operators or promoter, promoters, theatrical producers, live performing arts organizations, motion picture theaters, museum operators, zoos, aquariums who meet certain criteria, talent representatives. Uh, it says here up to five business entities owned by an eligible entity that also meet the eligibility requirement. Plus you must have been in operation as of 29 February, 2020. Uh, you must not have received uh, applied for or received the PPP loan on or before the 27th, uh, December 27th, 2020. Okay, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, and this is, these are just the highlights. So again, what I would urge you to do is go to the websites, go to our, uh, the, you know, go, click on the Shutter Venue Operators Grant. And again, if you go to sba.gov slash coronavirus relief, which is in the right-hand corner. And then you'll see the link to Shuttered Venue. So uh, it's a lot more information there. And there's a frequently asked question uh, page that is on that, on that website. So to tell you more information about the Shuttered Venue. Uh, and again, it's not open yet. It's not open yet. Yeah, so. All right, so this is just a little matrix 
which uh, I'm not a fond, so fond of <laughs> matrix, a matrix, but to help you determine, wait a minute, if I get PPP, can I get, you, you know, uh, can I get a shuttered venue or the COVID-19, you know, disaster loan, so on and so forth. So this, this little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> my little dog just ran over here so anyway so this this um matrix is to help you determine so if you applied for ppp uh right so you apply for ppp and then you look down here and then you're a recipient of ppp uh first box first draw ppp borrowers may be eligible to apply for a second draw ppp loans oh okay got it I've got that makes sense to me. Uh, and then let's say if you're a recipient of PPP and then you go over here to shuttered venue, you may apply for shuttered venue if you received a PPP loan prior to 12-27-20. So you go, oh, okay. That sort of makes sense to me. And so on and so forth. So anyway, it's just uh, it's supposed to help whether it helps or it confuses you more. <laughs> That's yes, Samalit. Yeah, I want to do a quick pause. So this is this is great stuff for us. That uh, this this matrix is going to be very helpful to folks who are looking, you know, apply to different things. I have a few questions that were brought up. Um, one of them is about all these things that you know, all this money people are receiving in terms of, you know, where do they go to find out is it taxable? How is they going to get treated and everything like that? What we're telling folks is to go in and speak to um, their. Um, uh, CPA, so they're, you know, certified public accountant on this, you know, and get tax, you know, advice or information from them on how all of this is taxable. My understanding is too that, you know, when the latest um, changes to the law were made, that when people, the, the funds are just taxable. However, you, if you use it for your business expenses, payroll, et cetera, that's all tax deductible. So in your taxes, you can deduct all those expenses, which technically came from the grant. Yeah, so that was like five slides ago. It, it actually <laughs> said there that it was, uh, it was uh, right, those expenses. PP, I mean, it, it's all spelled out. But again, what SBA, SBA doesn't do, we don't address the tax issues, meaning that we don't control them. So the IRS does. The IRS has made, um, uh, has, de has determined what is and what is not, um, you know, eligible or taxable, and your accountant will know. They're getting notices from the IRS or should know, or should know how to access that. But again, you know, uh, it was earlier, on, I forget how many slides ago, but it was on the slides. Yeah, that specifically mentioned. Um, no problem. I wanted to bring it up because I know yeah. this person asked the question. I responded in the Q&A, but I know other people might have the same question or maybe they, they just missed the slide. So then right. another question for you, Orestes. So in the Shutter Benny Operators Program, um, this particular individual has a business where she produces cultural events and um, she rents out different venues to do those cultural events. So she doesn't own her venue, she rents it out to be able to do like a like a film festival kind of thing. Or would she still be eligible? Maybe, but I'm not. I know when I was looking at, uh, you, you know, at that web. And the thing is, I don't know any more than on what is on that website. So if you want to know what I know, she's uh, been through the FAQs, okay. and that's why she, so, she's so, asking the question. You know, and, so, and so if you don't own the venue, if you just rent the venue, would you still be eligible? That's really the question. I don't know a hundred percent. So yeah. we'll, we'll have and, to get you know, back as, to you guys as you as know. we as we mm -hmm. you know as we get closer to it opening up, there's you know it's just the same thing what happened with PPP when the originally PPP came out where there was like twelve questions frequently asked questions and then we ended up with one hundred twenty five <laughs> frequently asked questions. So her situation is not a unique, unique. situation. Uh, you know, what I had read was that the venue had to be a fixed seating venue. So, so what is that? Does that mean? Well, she's renting a fixed seating venues, but she doesn't own the fixed seating venue. So is that, so, 
you know, so as we get closer to, to game day, as it were, uh, you know, these questions will will certainly be answered. Right. That's the best okay. I can do right now. Well, that's Carlos. Carlos, he knows so, everything. No, so so with that one right there, well, you're right. I, I echo every word that Areste said, but there is a eligibility mailbox that we can forward that question to. So wh whoever asked that question, if you can send that, you know, to Areste and Samalad and, you know, add your contact, we can forward it and we'll make sure to CC you on it. So whatever response Samalid, comes back. Samalid, Carlos, Samalid. Oh, what, what I said, that's what I said. It must be my phone connection. <laughs> I got but, um, that's but all right. It, yeah, I'm yeah, used to yeah, it by now. <laughs> but if, if, if you do that, sorry about that pronunciation. Um, but if, if you do that, you know, we can send it to you, CC you on it, so you can have the answer as soon as we get it too. But no, good question. All right. We have another question here, Reste, another one of our of our um, people attending here today. They are, um, can they still apply for PPP even though they're currently in unemployment? Pandemic unemployment assistance, I would presume. Well, it, the, the, what? Where, so are, would they have to they stop the are they pandemic? Are you saying they're receiving unemployment assistance? Currently right now. They're on pandemic unemployment assistance. Can they still apply for the PPP? So, well, it depends. The thing is, uh, what, what SBA's guidance was that uh, unemployment, it says something like this, unemployment assistance might be affected by PPP. The, 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 the goal is to replace a person's salary. Okay, that's the goal. So let's say you're a sole proprietor, you're running your business and you're collecting unemployment. Now, Carlos and I, we're not unemployment specialists. That's run by the state, you know, it's funded in part by the feds, but it's run by the state. So ultimately, but, but anyway, the goal is that for people not to double dip. If you are having, if you're getting a PPP loan and it's replacing your salary, you really shouldn't be receiving unemployment assistance because you're you're the, the the government is now paying you twice so something's got to give there can you apply of course you can apply and let's say you apply and you receive it well again i'm, I'm stepping out of the limb here a little bit but then you know if you're receiving ppp you have to stop the you should stop the the unemployment assistance so you really shouldn't be collecting both but there's no, there's no restriction in the application in applying for the PPP. Uh, it's just that if, if and when you receive it, then you need to, you know, drop, drop the unemployment. So again, that's, I'm going a little beyond our comfort zone, but uh, mm -hmm. those, that's so, the So the guidance is uh, still apply. If you, once you receive it, then you should probably get off unemployment. Because well, our, our guidance doesn't it. say any of that. So that's the thing is <laughs> like, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking kind of beyond our guidance and okay. probably yell at me later for it. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah. our, our I mean, guidance- it is, says, it's, it's kind of makes sense. Like why would you get off on it now when you don't know if, if, if you're going to actually receive it? Yeah, so it's it's a tough, it's, a, it's a, you know, but someone has to decide what is best for them, their lives, their business. Right. Uh, what benefits them in the long run. I don't know. Each person is different situation. How long are unemployment benefits available to a person? So it's, mm -hmm. you know, and then whereas the PPP is only going to be two and a half times your monthly average salary. So you're going to go, okay, you know, do your math, do your maths, you know, but right. uh, anyway. All right. So I have a few other questions here. Russ, that, um, so one of our um, technical assistance providers partners has a business, is helping a business who started in November 2019, but their sales weren't good in the beginning comparing to the following months in 2020. They're not able to show that 25% reduction to apply for the second PPP draw. What should they do? Even if they go year over year, I mean, they, so you can do quarter, compare like quarter, comparative quarter, quarter or year over year. Yeah. And if they can't show their, the, if they can't show that reduction, then they're not eligible. That's the way I 
understand it or read it. Right. So, so for that particular person, they should look at their quarter to quarter changes. And if it's 25% or more reduction, then they will be eligible. If not, then they, they're not yeah. eligible for a second draft. Okay. And then how did you decide? Um, so there's another question here. Um, how did you decide if, if it's better for your business to, um, to apply for the PPP or the SBO if you're eligible for both? That's the, yeah, that, so the thing is, uh, that's a tough question to answer. Uh, the, my understanding is uh, the shuttered venue is that uh, it could be a larger sum of money than, than the PPP um, dependent on the business. So, uh, so yeah, and you, you can't have your cake and eat it too, right? So you can't have both. And how do you determine? Uh, and we don't, you know, we do not yet know when they're going to open the shuttered venue. So, you know, I'm kind of in a quandary, I think, like most people, like what to do, what to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, I wish I had a, a, a better answer. Um, so if somebody applies for both, Oresta, because they're eligible for both, um, you know, for, I, I'm assuming this is a, a first draw PPP, because if it was a second draw, um, or, or not necessarily, but you know, you said that that if you're applying for the SBO, basically you you're not you can't have the, you you can't have the PPP funding, right? That's what you say in one of your early slides. So, that, who's that, the other? That, who? That's that's right. Um, that, that's the that that phrase is correct, and I think what's going to happen is when the when the business owner makes this decision, if they're going to go apply PPP, one of the questions on the actual application says that you have not or, or you haven't applied for the SBOG. And if you have, it's not eligible. So it's, it's in the application, it's, it's, an, it's an application question. So really, as, as Arreste mentioned earlier, you know, it's, it's more of a business decision, you know, after you look at all the facts and numbers in front of you, which is the best route for the business owner. We really can't direct you into the direction you wanna pick, um, but we do know based on the FAQs there that if you're denied one of the programs and you're, you know, you should go the other route. Um, but okay. So even, you know, though, yeah. even though even the application say, have you applied? If you apply for the SVO and then you get denied, then you can still go back and apply for PPP? Say that one more time. I just want to make sure I heard that one correctly. <laughs> <laughs> so even though you said that one of the questions in the PPP application says, have you applied for the SVO grant? Right, or right. you have not received. Mm -hmm. But what if you applied for it and you get denied? I don't know what the timing is. I can't remember all the dates in terms of, you know, deadlines for various programs. But say you apply for the SVOG um, and then you get denied. Can you go back and apply for the PPP? Right. So as long, I guess, if the, the, the March 31st has elapsed, right, you apply for SVOG, it, you know, you get denied, then you can go, not for sure, go to the PPP route because you know the SVOG route won't, won't be available for you. So how long do you do? Do we know how long does it take to hear back on the SVOG uh, from the moment you apply yet. for it? It's not it's open not yet. It's not open yet. It's not open, so we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Oh my gosh! Yes. We're here between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we oh. all are. We all are. Yeah, it's. Uh, oh. We're okay. all anxiously so we, waiting for more Somali. information. Somali Oreste, can you hear me? It's Nadine. Yes. Hey, Nadine. Hey, I raised my hand. I got booted out and now I came back in as a rest day. So <laughs> that's all right. I'll, I'll rename you. Thank you. Um, I did put in the chat that we are going to have, we being SBA, we are going to have a training tomorrow morning for completing the SAM profile. I did not know if, S, uh, if a rest day remembered that or if you even knew, but um, tomorrow morning at nine o'clock a.m., I did put the event right address for completing the SAM profile. And the SAM profile is going to be, is a requirement for those who will be applying for the SDOG uh, grant. It is, uh, SAM is a contracting and a grant registration for the United States federal government. 
and um, we did put the event bright. I did put the event bright in there. It's from nine to ten thirty tomorrow morning, with Sandra Ledbetter leading that, and I will be online with her, and we will have a couple of others. But once again, a Sam profile could take seven days. It could take twenty one days. SVOG has not opened yet. Get your Sam profile ready now because it's not like going to Macy's to get a credit card. It does take a few days. <laughs> yeah. Nadine, Nadine, be so kind to remind us what is a SAM profile? Oh, it's system for awards management. And if you want to do business with the government or if you want to receive grants from the United States federal government, you're going to need to create a SAM profile. And the SAM, and make sure you see SAM.gov, not SAM.com. So you want to see Uncle Sam's hat in there. It is a general services administration database. It's a huge database for anybody who wants to do business with the United States federal government. Right. And I did see you did put on the chat that um, February 12th. You know, yes. And there's an Eventbrite link right there on the chat as well. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much, Nadine. Thank yeah, you for, for jumping thanks, in. Thanks, Nadine. Sure. <laughs> All right. I'm glad you were uh, here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question here. Can businesses who receive their uh, EIDL request, hmm, so EIDL loan, who, can they ask for more money? There is a mechanism to be, uh, yes. Uh, if you received economic injury disaster loan, uh, and you're looking for an increase, there's a reconsideration process, but I'll tell you it's quite cumbersome. Uh, and I want everyone to keep in mind that the economic injury disaster loan is a great tool for business. Uh, to date, there's approximately, or were approximately 16 million requests for this loan which is probably more than maybe in the history of the loan. Uh, see, the economic injury disaster loan has been used for years and years and years for various and sundry uh, disasters all across the country. But probably, you know, in, in the thousands or tens of thousands loan requests in a year. So 15 million. The SBA has brought on, to my knowledge, something like 10,000 additional employees, temporary employees, to assist uh, with the economic injury disaster loan and some of the other programs. Uh, so what does that all mean? It means that the process is cumbersome and it's taking people weeks, usually months, to, to navigate through that. Uh, but uh, that's a that, that's a whole nother presentation. <laughs> you know, one, thing, one thing, can I add a rest day on that? Yeah, it, it's a question. So if, if someone is considering an increase, right? I can't hear you. Your mic. You can't gone. hear you, Carlos. Something happened with your mic. Oh, oh you can hear me now. That's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if, if they are considering a, an increase, it's not a new application, so they will not be going to the website and reapplying for additional amount. As Correct. Arisa mentioned, there's a, a reconsideration process. So same thing, re send us an email. If that's something that you're looking for, we can send you those instructions, but it, it's not a new application that you're doing. It's, it's a request to get that increase done. Absolutely, that's the last thing you wanna do. It creates, oh boy, it creates a huge headache if you apply a second time, it's a, a nightmare. So yeah, thanks Carlos for emphasizing that. Right. Samalid, what else you got? And someone, uh, someone noted here that SAM.org, um, what is it, SAM.org? Or is it supposed to be SAM.gov? SAM.gov. SAM.gov. Okay, SAM.gov. I'm going to put Sam, SAM.org or SAM.com that, is going to be else. a bad place to be, probably. So, yeah. so, so I guess to Sam. get that Sam. number, okay, to get that number, it's free. You shouldn't be paying anybody to get That's you that. That's correct. correct. Free, All free, right? free. So don't get scammed. That's a free number, just like. An employer ID number is free. Um, th that's okay, Tony. <laughs> that's okay. So you said it by apologies because he wrote it wrong in the chat, but no problem. We understood what you meant, sam.gov. Um, it's free. You shouldn't pay anybody to get that number. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. 
continue, Oreste. I don't see any other additional questions in the chat. If I miss anybody's questions, free, please retype it in the chat or in the Q&A and we'll get to them. So the next area of assistance is loan debt relief. What does that mean? What this means is that if you already have a SBA 7A loan, these are non-disaster loans, okay? So if you have a 7A loan, 504 loan, a micro loan, you're already a borrower, okay? What happened in 2020 is that SBA paid principal and interest, I think up to six months for previous loans. Now there's some changes for going forward for 2021. Uh, and in fact, if you are in the process now or you, are, you plan to apply for one of these types of loan, debt relief will be applicable to some degree to you. What do you have to do? Nothing. There's nothing that you would do. Uh, you don't apply for debt relief. It would happen automatically, which means SBA is going to pay for your um, principal and interest. I think it's up to $9,000 a month. Um, and again, it's a little confusing even to me. <clears throat> is it three months? Is it five months? Did you get so many months prior to 2020? There, so, but, uh, but the bottom line is uh, you, uh, it will happen automatically and uh, you w should have received a letter uh, from SBA and then you can see what that letter would look like if you go to that website there. Uh, uh, coronavirus relief, debt relief, sample letter, whatever. Uh, you can certainly contact your lender if you have any questions. They're a little busy right now doing PPP. It's hard to contact any lender at this point. But uh, but anyway, so that's another another really uh, good news uh, story there. So again, this is the uh, the takeaways. We talked about PPP. We talked about, I just talked about the debt relief. We talked about economic injury, disaster loan, targeted advance, and the, uh, the, the, the shuttered venue to at least some degree, the, at least what we know at this point. Uh, and actually, Smalaj, she actually kind of covered this already in the front, uh, on the front end. Uh, but again, if you have questions, you need assistance with applications, if you're a new business and you're looking for a loan now, uh, or you're looking for one-on-one -on -one consulting, it has nothing to do with the disaster, or you wanna know how to market your business, check out our organizations. Uh, these, again, this is, this is, oh, I messed up here. I see I have Boston score, I didn't change that. <laughs> I was doing a different presentation, but anyway, so, uh, uh, we can connect you with the right people to help. Uh, that's, you know, the bottom line is, again, Samala covered that. And then you could always uh, email me. Oh, one of the things I, I wanted to mention was that if you want to know what we know when we know it, go to sba.gov slash updates, put in your email, your zip code, you will get our newsletter, our emails, before COVID, it would be like a monthly email and it would be an education calendar. Hey, this is what's going on. And in SBA and with our resource partners, here's doing what and when and where they're doing it. Now it's like every other day, something comes out because guidance comes out. So especially with the shuttered venue, you definitely want to be signed up for our updates because if you are, as soon as we know information about shuttered venue, boom, you'll get it. I mean, literally, it ha usually happens within hours after it's released that uh, 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 Norm Eng, who's, who's our public affairs guy, he gets it out, boom, <laughs> he gets it right out. So that's the best way to stay uh, uh, on top of... That, that's great, Arista. thank you. Um, and thank you for flashing your contact information out there. I'm sure you're going to get many emails after today um, or you, more than you usually get. So That's there's awesome. a few other questions here. So for you, when you talked about the debt relief letters, is there a timeline for those to come out? What happens if some of the folks have not already received it? Is there, is there a chance they're still, they still may receive the debt relief letter? 
they're going to receive the debt relief one way or another. So uh, as, as long as the loan is in good standing, and Carlos, you can jump in here if there's some other requirement there. There are some other requirements uh, when it comes to debt relief. Carlos, go ahead. Right. So, so in, in general, those, those letters have been mailed out. And it's really just a quick summary to tell you that you may be eligible well, your loans may be eligible for some type of payment relief. Um, it spells out different criteria, but it, but you're right, Arreste, as long as, you know, it's in good standing, it's been, you know, fully dispersed and the letter, the lenders were um, approving it, the, the bar themselves, there's nothing on your behalf that you have to do. It's more of an awareness letter to you. And on the lender's side of the house, we're communicating with them to make sure that the reporting are, are being done correctly, sending on time, so the, ben the borrower receives the benefit. And believe me, every lender is looking to get all those payments made and you know and give to, given to their borrowers. And actually, Carlos, while you're there, uh, Nick uh, asked the question, he received six months already. Will that be, ex will he get more is than the six months or? So, so the six months was this prior. So that was under the CARES Act authorized that. So yeah. That was last year. Now this year is a new, round of payments but um it, it's going to be adjusted a little bit depending on one there are some industries that have been while every industry has been impacted or some industry that's been impacted more severely so mm -hmm. those will get additional months on top of their the standard ones and i believe the standard right now is about three months of payment um made on behalf of the borrower so it's a new round of 11, section 11 12 payments Okay, so it is a new round. So it's it's possible, and if it happens, great. <laughs> so, but it will happen automatically one way or another. All right. So we still have a few minutes here. We're going all the way to 2.30. So we have about six, seven minutes left. So for those of you who've been, uh, you know, listening in and you may still have a question, this is your chance to uh, submit a question and get an answered by either Oreste, Carlos, or Nadine. They're here from the SBA to answer your questions uh, to the best of their ability. So if you have a question, this is your chance um, to ask it directly. Um, I know Oreste flashed the contact information for, um, for the folks, uh, uh, for, his, for his contact information. I don't know if, if Carlos or Nadine, if you wanna put your emails on the chat, I'll leave that up to you. Um, and then, Let's see here, anything else? Uh, any other questions coming in? Oh. Let's just look at it real quick. Uh, let's see here. All right, I don't see any, oh, there's one that just popped up. So um, another uh, participant here asked, can we apply for a second EIDL loan or for additional funds? I believe we already answered that question. You can request additional funds for uh, from your if you've already been approved for the EIDL loan, you can request for additional funds, and uh, but not there's a, not like right. a second at EIDL loan. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So do not go on the website and apply for a second EIDL loan. You can go back to whomever you contact to connect it with before um, Oreste for the first loan and request to them. Or is was there? I know um, Carlos if talked they, about that. This yeah, like, email, consideration. If, if something. they email me, then I'll send them the. Okay, the, the so direction. the answer here is uh, for Rosanne, if email um, Oreste and uh, he'll send you the instructions on how you can request additional funds for your EID loan. Another um, another question here. I have heard that PPP loans under one hundred fifty thousand will be automatically forgiven. One does not have to apply for forgiveness. Is that true? No, that's not true. That's not you still true. have to apply. Yes, you still need to but, apply for forgiveness. There's a form. There's a there's a form specifically for loans one hundred fifty thousand dollars or less that you need to fill out in order to apply for forgiveness, and that's submitted to the bank, right, Oreste? Yeah, all forgiveness goes through the bank. So you would contact it now. Some, you know, I've heard lots of different stories from lots of different people. Are like, well, my bank's not doing forgiveness right now. Well, again, we can't we can't force them. Uh, you know, they have limited personnel and they're focused on, let's say, get money out uh, to people. And, and again, there's no urgency on, on the on the forgiveness. You have 10 months after the covered period. So now some people are it's conceivable that if you, you're coming up against that 10 months uh, and you're nervous, you're like, uh oh, oh, man, I got to apply. 
but uh, so, uh, but anyway, um, no, it's not going to happen automatically. I, I did see uh, uh, Nick had asked a question about uh, is it a separate application for the idle advance? So th there is no idle advance anymore except for the targeted advance and you cannot apply for it. So if you, were, you know, what I mentioned on that slide uh, was that uh, if you applied and never received it, then S SBA is supposed to make good on it. Or if you uh, received a portion of it, you'll be, you know, but th there's, there were certain, again, when you go back, when you get these slides and you look at them, it spells it all out as to what the uh, criteria was, whether you would get the, uh, the, you know, the grant, the advance later on or not. Right, are you speaking to Jamie's questions? Um, I wasn't, what's Jamie's question? Okay, um, she did not apply for the EIDL last summer because the advance was no longer available by the time she saw it. Now, she says, I can't apply for the advance because I didn't apply last year. Can you comment on this? I think this might be so a little if you, if you apply, If you apply for the economic injury disaster loan, then, uh, well, originally, or, or at a certain period of time, there was a little box that said, do you want to be considered for a grant? And you, you know, yes. Uh, if you apply today, I don't, th th that's not available to you, to my knowledge. Right. It's not available. Correct. So, so Jamie, you can go in and apply for the EIDL loan uh, program. You're, it's not going to be an advance. It's going to be the loan program. You can apply as, uh, today for it. So it's not, um, if you didn't apply that summer, you can still apply today. You just won't be eligible for right. any there's type no, of loan advance. Okay. There's no grant portion for new loans. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that work, Oreste? Somebody was to apply for the EID loan. I know you I know you had the chart up there. Sorry. But can they still apply for the PPP? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th so the the IDL and PPP, no no issues. You can apply for both. Uh, generally, what just the with IDL funds, you what they what they don't want you to do is utilize the funds for the same thing. So with the PPP, right. you're replacing salary, and so you shouldn't be using IDL funds also for salary. So. so you need to document, and I tell this to all my clients, document specifically what you're using each funds for, you know, and separate them so that you can provide documentation to show that you didn't double dip. You didn't use this PPP funding for payroll and then EIDL funding for payroll or for some other bi eligible business expense twice from both. Right. Okay. Um, and then, so another question here, if you apply for other grant money and receive you know, uh, a, a grant such as the Massachusetts sec specific sector, the one from NGCC, the state of Massachusetts that that uh, sector specific grant um, for small businesses or the Verizon grant money. If if those are awarded to you, can you still apply for more fund for like the second draw PPP? You can apply for PPP. We don't have any restrictions that because you got some grant from X, Y, or Z, that's not part of the eligibility criteria. So now sometimes vice versa, I can't speak that like, you know, if you got PPP and then you're applying for these grants, it might say, well, did you already, you know, I don't know about that, but right. uh, you can apply. And that is PPP. correct. In, in many of these grants for MGCC, um, the state of Massachusetts, they did ask the question, did you apply? Did you receive the funding and so on? Again, they're also concerned about duplication, depending on how much funding you need, how much money you actually need for your business. It may be overkill to apply for all of this, or perhaps you need more. And so you won't be duplicating funds if you are receiving all of the funds. Uh, you might be able to still spend all the money for different purposes. So that is the main concern. But in regards to um, from federal to state, or for those other grants, PPP doesn't really take into consideration whether you got a state grant or a Verizon grant or whatever. It, it, that does not apply. You can still apply for, for PPP second draw. Okay, our Esther, I think we're out of time and our questions for now. Thank you so much for doing this today. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Nadine. And thank you, Bob, even though he's already gone. <laughs> uh -huh. But he was here for quite a while watching and, and listening. 
Thank you all for joining us here today. We really appreciate your time. I hope this was helpful to you. Again, if you have any questions or need um, additional information about any of these programs, reach out to Oreste, um, reach out to um, the, our business technical assistance providers to our office. You can do that here. I'm gonna flash it on the screen again once, once more. These are the technical assistance providers in our area. Some of them are SBA Research Partner, like SCORE and the Center for Women Enterprise and the MSPDC. And um, if, if you're looking for what one-on-one -on -one free confidential business advisory session, because you have very specific questions about your business and you want to know, you know, which one you should apply to or what, what is what, <laughs> right? Um, Here's a link to our website, msbdc.org. You can find the office closest to you and request counseling. Every office has a request for counseling form. You can fill out and they'll contact you back and set up an appointment. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Thanks, Mala. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. Stay Thank well. You,